All right, hey everyone, welcome back to another video of Salesforce Makes Sense. This is Simanshu, and we are discussing use case 14 of our Apex Masterclass. In this video, we'll understand how to generate a Fibonacci series of numbers till a specific number. That's use case 14. So if you're someone who's following along, let's continue our use case videos. And if you would like to try it on your own, pause the video here and give it a try on your own and then see the, see the result. And for those of you who are seeing this video as the very first video of the playlist, I'll suggest you start from chapter one so that you can build your understanding and become a Salesforce developer based on every chapters that we have had. This is probably chapter 73 of our Salesforce development curriculum. So yeah, use case 14, write a method that generates a Fibonacci series of numbers till a specific number. Now what is a Fibonacci series? It's nothing but the current number is the sum of the previous two numbers. That's all it is. So it starts with 0, 1. And then if you see 0, 1, and then what is 0 plus 1? It is 1. What is 1 plus 1? It is 2. Similarly, 8 plus 5 is 13. 13 plus 8 is 21 and so on. All right. So we'll ask the user to give us a specific number. Let's say they give us 45. Right. So we'll create the sequence until we reach the number 45 or we reach somewhere close to it. We'll not go beyond the number 45. That's the use case. OK, so this reminds me of uh, our for for people who are from engineering background, you know, we had this uh, C and C++ classes wherein we had to uh, do these kind of programs so that we were able to build logic properly. So these these kind of programs help you build and derive logic very, very nicely. So that's why this is important. OK, so this is one of those use cases. Let's give it a try. So I'll create a new Apex class. I'll call it Apex use case 14. And I'll get rid of my constructor as usual. And I'll just go ahead and say public static list of integer return Fibonacci sequence and integer end number. So what did I do here? I have just quickly written the method definition. The data type or the return type of the method is going to be a list of integer. Why? Because it is going to be a collection of numbers right and it is accepting an n number what is that n number nothing but the last number till which we can generate the sequence all right cool let's get started so first of all i need to start my list right so i'll simply say n is equals zero let's say m is equal to zero and n is equal to one Right? These are the two numbers that I have in the beginning. What can I do now? I can run an iterator. Right? Just think about it. If I had to create a Fibonacci sequence, if I had to create a sequence, I'd have to run through a loop. Every time I have to run through a loop until I reach the end number and I'll be adding the previous two numbers. That's the idea I'm going with. Right? So I can simply say for integer i equals 0, i less than equal to the end number. Make sense? I plus plus. So what did I do here? I created a for loop. I gave it a integer variable, which will be my loop variable. I'm starting it with the zeroth element, zeroth value, and I'm going until I reach the end number, right? And I say I plus plus. So I'm just going ahead and saying that, you know, you continue this until you reach the end number, but there's no use of it because we'll, we'll be using, we'll be writing a logic inside the for loop to come out of the loop. Okay. I'll show you how. So. I need to first create a list that I'll be returning. So I'll simply copy my list variable here and I'll just say list variable final result is equal to new list variable. Okay. That's my final result variable. So I'll use this here. Correct. Now what can I add here? So what will be my number? My number will basically be integer next number will basically be nothing but i plus j y or sorry m plus n i'm so used to i and j variables that i forgot i declared it as m and n okay so 0 plus 1 will be 1 here correct so my next number will basically be added to the list right so this will hold true when the numbers are 0 comma 1 so it will come here it will add so it will be 1 correct now what happens the next time when the i variable value is 1? It will again do the same calculation, right? 
it will again says m plus n equal to 1 which is 0 and 1 that means we need to reinitialize the values of m and n inside our loop correct so now m that was my starting number now what should be my starting number my starting number should be n why i'll show you here don't get confused okay this is a bit confusing i understand see we started with 0 and 1 make sense 0 and 1 is what we started with now we are iterating okay so that we are able to continue this until a certain period of time don't think about what is the logic inside iteration okay next number now next number should be what it should be the summation of the previous two numbers now this is m and this is n right now now what is my next number next number is m plus n right which is basically 1 so I'm adding 1 here to my final result so far so good right now if you think about it this m and n should be shifted right I should get rid of this 0 and my m and n should shift one place correct so now see what previously was n now m should be 1 and n should be this one correct which is why I've just said m should be equal to n which is this value so I'm saying this will now be m and the next number that I've received as the result should be n and that's why I'll say n is equal to the next number and that should do it that's it because now m is 1 and n is also 1 so this time when it runs to the loop it will come as 1 plus 1 equal to 2 correct so then it will be printed 2 here so far so good now again m and n will be shifted here so this will basically be 1 and this is how it would look because n will be given assigned to m and the next number will be assigned to n so this is now 1 and this is now 2 next time it will come here it will basically be 1 plus 2 which is 3 and so on and so forth all right so this is how your fibonacci sequence is going to work out I'll get rid of all the comments and I'll show you what the result prints out as okay we'll take a look at it how it looks and we'll try to see something that's still missing so I'll just go ahead and say deploy this deploy from project sorry deploy source to org all right there's some error what's the error I'm missing a return type because I have declared a variable declared a method with list of integer type I need to return this result also so I'll say return final list save let's deploy it again hopefully it should be deployed yes it is deployed let's go to salesforce let's open developer console let's copy the name of our class and let's try to execute it apex use case 14 dot return fibonacci sequence and i'll give it give it a number okay so i'll give it a number let's say 30 execute executes fine opens the debug log and let's take a look at the debug log and if you notice 1 2 3 5 8 13 looks very good and very neat and it is a fibonacci sequence however there are two things to notice it does not start with 0 comma 1 because that's part of the sequence and second it's going beyond 45 because that was our end number right so we need to put a check somehow here so that it does not cross the number the end number and the second thing is we need to be adding the final result dot add should also take into consideration the initial two numbers that were defined here which is m and n so that the sequence starts with m and then it also continues to n and then it proceeds with all the calculation and auto calculations alright now how do I control how long should the list be populated I have this n number correct so what can I do I can simply come in here and say if next number sorry not here here if next number is greater than or equal to the end number break out of the loop you don't need to continue okay meaning do not add any more things and just break out of the loop that's what basically the break statement does if you are on a loop it basically takes you out of that loop and it comes here it does not even continue even if the for loop has more iterations to take into consideration 
okay so that is what this particular code is doing what am i doing i'm basically not letting you add any more new numbers if your number is more than or greater than the end number that the user has input so if it is more than 45 please come out of the loop need not print any more numbers that's what this particular code is doing all right let's go ahead and try to deploy the source and let's see now if our sequence is pretty perfect I'll just go ahead and execute this one more time. Let's take it till 45 and I'll say execute. Execute it fine. Let's say debug only and it takes you only until 34. And why not anything beyond because 34 plus 21 would be 55 and that's more than the end number that we put. Right? So that is how you have been able to create a sequence by writing a logical sequence of code. All right. That was all from this particular use case. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.